Welcome back guys to the 2.3 gas exchange series. This is video 2. In this video you'll be learning about the four characteristics of an efficient gas exchange system. And by the end of this lesson you should be able to discuss the four characteristics of an efficient gas exchange system. So in the previous lesson you learned about why gas exchange is so important for the survival of animals. It's important because gas exchange allows animals to absorb the oxygen they need to carry out aerobic cellular respiration to make the energy and the ATP they need to survive. Equally, it's also important because gas exchange allows animals to get rid of the carbon dioxide waste made by aerobic cellular respiration. So because gas exchange is so important, it's important for gas exchange systems to be efficient. For gas exchange systems to be efficient, they must have these four characteristics that maximize the rate of diffusion. The first characteristic is that specialized respiratory surfaces must have a large surface area to volume ratio. The second characteristic is that specialized respiratory surfaces must be moist. The third characteristic is that specialized respiratory surfaces must be thin. And the fourth characteristic is that there must be a large concentration gradient across the specialized respiratory surface. Remember that the specialized respiratory surface is the location or the site where gas exchange happens. So let's talk about each of these four characteristics one by one and let's start with a large surface area to volume ratio. So the rate of oxygen and carbon dioxide diffusion across any specialized respiratory surface depends on the amount of surface area available. This is because if the respiratory surface has a larger surface area, there will be more sites for oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules to enter and exit the respiratory surface. As you can see in this diagram, diffusion is more efficient when the gas exchange system has a large or high surface area to volume ratio. This is because with a higher surface area to volume ratio, there's a large enough respiratory surface for diffusion to occur per volume of air or water. So in other words, per volume of air or water available, there's loads of sites for gas exchange to happen. There's enough sites for oxygen to diffuse inside the body and there's enough sites for carbon dioxide to diffuse out of the body. Without a large surface area to volume ratio, there wouldn't be enough sites along the respiratory surface for oxygen and carbon dioxide to diffuse across and this reduces the rate of diffusion. To illustrate the real importance of a large surface area to volume ratio, let's look at a very extreme example of what happens without it. So here is a drawing and here is a real chest x-ray of a condition called pneumothorax, also known as a collapsed lung. This life-threatening condition can be caused by blunt or penetrating chest injury, among other things, and results in your lung collapsing in itself like a deflated balloon. Part of why this is life-threatening is because a collapsed lung, right here, has a significantly reduced surface area, and this results in reducing the efficiency of diffusion, and therefore the efficiency of gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now let's look at the second characteristic of an efficient gas exchange system, moisture. For gas exchange to happen, oxygen and carbon dioxide must first dissolve in water or a watery solution before they can diffuse across a semi-permeable membrane and into a cell. So the specialized respiratory surface needs to be moist and not dry. A really good thing for fish is that water in the ocean already contains oxygen that's been dissolved in water. In this picture here, the arrows are pointing to dissolved oxygen in water. This is what's available to fish for gas exchange. 
So fish don't have to worry about um, creating moisture in their gas exchange system because they're already submerged in water fully. But for crickets and for humans, they have to worry about keeping their gas exchange surface moist. Without a moist respiratory surface, oxygen and carbon dioxide won't be able to diffuse across the respiratory surface because there's no water to dissolve into first. And this stops gas exchange. Let's look at the third characteristic of an efficient gas exchange system. The surface has to be thin. The rate that oxygen and carbon dioxide can diffuse across a respiratory surface depends on how far the molecules have to travel. So the specialized respiratory surface has to be as thin as possible to make the distance the molecules have to travel as short as possible. A short diffusion distance means molecules can diffuse faster. And that's shown here in this diagram where this membrane is very thin. Whereas thick membranes or um, far diffusion distances or long diffusion distances result in molecules traveling more slowly through that membrane. And so if it's traveling more slowly, it's going to affect the rate of diffusion. You need to remember that diffusion is a form of passive transport. It's a relatively slow process. And diffusion is made even slower if the distance a molecule has to travel is very, very far. Keep this in mind when you're reading about the circulatory system's effect on an animal's size. And let's look at the final fourth um, characteristic of an efficient gas exchange, and that's maintaining a high concentration gradient across the respiratory surface. The rate that oxygen and carbon dioxide can diffuse across a specialized respiratory surface depends on how large or how steep the concentration gradient is across the membrane. For a concentration gradient to be large or steep, there must be a very high concentration of molecules on one side of the respiratory surface and a very low concentration of the same molecule on the other side of the respiratory surface. This is because diffusion is solely driven by a concentration gradient. The larger the concentration gradient is, the higher the rate of diffusion, the faster the molecules are going to diffuse. But without a concentration gradient, so if both sides of the membrane had equal concentrations of that molecule, there would be nothing driving diffusion across that respiratory surface. There would be no gas exchange happening. So those are the four characteristics of an efficient gas exchange that all of these animals and all of these gas exchange systems need to have to be able to get enough oxygen from the environment and supply the aerobic respiration processes happening in the cells. So all of these animals we're studying need the same thing. They need an efficient gas exchange system, but they all go about getting this in different ways. Different taxonomic groups have different adaptations to meet those four requirements of an efficient gas exchange system. This means that different taxonomic groups have different adaptations for increasing surface area to volume ratio, keeping the respiratory surface moist and thin, and for maintaining a large concentration gradient across their respiratory surface. So why do these different animals have different adaptations if they're just after the same thing? The answer is that these different animals have different ecological niches, which means their gas exchange systems have evolved different adaptations to be able to survive and thrive in their particular niche. For example, humans have very different niches to um, the snapper and the cricket, and so our lung system is going to have very different adaptations to the gill system or the tracheal system in order to keep us alive. There are several aspects of an animal's ecological niche that you need to consider, but for this video we're just going to focus on the source of oxygen. Different taxonomic groups have different sources of oxygen. For mammals and insects, their source of oxygen is air. For fish, their source of oxygen is water. So let's compare these two different sources of oxygen. Air has about 21% oxygen, 
whereas water only has one. That's a very, very, very small amount of dissolved oxygen in water. And so fish are going to have very different adaptations to mammals and insects to be able to extract as much of this oxygen that's in water. Let's look at density. Air is much less dense and much less viscous than water. Because of this, air is much easier to move in and out of a gas exchange system. And because it's easier to move in and out, so it's easier to ventilate, it's going to cost the animal less energy. Whereas water is much harder to ventilate, to move in and out of a gas exchange system because it's more dense, it's more viscous, and so it's going to cost the animal, the fish, more energy to ventilate this air. But the one property that water has is that it's buoyant. Things float on water, whereas in air, things don't, heavy things don't float in, in air. Throughout the standard, you need to keep referring back to these properties of air and water because they're so important when you're comparing the different animals. The other things that we need to compare um, between air and water are the problems that come with it. So let's look at air first. What are its limitations as a source of oxygen? Well, air is dry. And remember that diffusion absolutely needs moisture or water for gases to dissolve into first. The other limitation is that um, air contains dust and debris, and these could damage the respiratory surface. And if respiratory surfaces are damaged, it will reduce the surface area. The other limitation is that air carries pathogens like bacteria, fungi, and viruses. And these um, pathogens thrive in the warm and mo moist environments of gas exchange systems like lungs. And if infections happen, these will damage the lungs and reduce the surface area. Now let's look at the limitations that water has. Water has very low oxygen in it. And this becomes a problem because remember that diffusion is driven by a large concentration gradient. So if there's very low oxygen in water, how is a gas exchange system going to have adaptations to get as much oxygen out of water as possible? The other limitation is that water is viscous and it's dense and it's hard to ventilate, move in and out of the gas exchange system. This could limit the rate of ventilation. And the third limitation of water is that it contains debris like rocks or other random things that get washed up in water. And this has the potential to damage the respiratory surface. And if respiratory surfaces are damaged, then that will reduce the surface area and reduce diffusion. So all adaptations of all gas exchange systems aim to maximize the rate of diffusion so that it can maximize the efficiency of gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. This means that there are adaptations to keep the specialized respiratory surfaces moist and thin and have a large surface area to volume ratio and have a high concentration gradient across the surface. There are also adaptations that deal with the problems that come with living on land or in water because these problems threaten that rate of diffusion. And there are also adaptations that allow an organism to grow larger in size than others. So as you learn about the adaptations of the lung system in mammals, the gill system of fish, and the tracheal system of insects, it's important that you think of how these adaptations maximize the rate of diffusion in terms of these four characteristics of an efficient gas exchange, and how they deal with the problems that come with living on land and water, and how these adaptations may allow some taxonomic groups to grow larger than others. Awesome, you made it to the end of the video. So by now you should be able to discuss the four characteristics of an efficient gas exchange system. Go to Lemonade after watching this video and have a look at the tasks I've set up for you to do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.